Hello everyone. Welcome to the topic relations and functions. Here we discuss various types of relations defined in a set. Reflexive relation, symmetric relation, transitive relation and equivalence relation. We have considered in a set A with elements 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. A relation is defined in set A means the domain and codomain both are the same set. All these classification of relations are defined when the relation is defined from a set to the same set. Now, as we know, any relation in a set A is a subset of A cross A. A cross A is the set of all possible pairs made of using elements of set A. All possible pairs. This is A cross A. Now, any subset of A cross A is called a relation. Let's take an example. A subset we are going to make of this A cross A. Consider this subset which is given in the set builder form. In this set, every pair A comma B should be in such a way that the second element B should be first element plus 2 for every A and B of set A. Let's see which all elements can we include in this subset. Here we go. 1 comma 3 can be included as 3 is equal to 1 plus 2. Yes, it's satisfying this condition. 2 comma 4 again satisfy the same condition. And 3 comma 5. That's it. No other element from this A cross A can be included in this subset. So, this relation now is written in the roster form. The elements, the pairs which satisfy the condition are simply listed down. This is called roster form. This is the set builder form. And here we see the arrow diagram of this example relation. Now, let's see whether this relation is a reflexive relation. What is reflexive relation? A relation R in the set A is called a reflexive relation if A comma A belong to the relation for every A of the set A. What does it mean? The elements of the form A comma A. That is every element should have been related to self. 1 comma 1, 2 comma 2, 3 comma 3, 4 comma 4, 5 comma 5. All such pairs should be included for every A belong to A. This kind of a pair should have been there in the relation, which is not happening in this one. So we express that since elements of the form A comma A do not belong to this relation, this relation is not a reflexive relation. To write this, we can express it through a counter example. One of those pairs which should have been there, we mention. 2 comma 2 does not belong to the relation. This acts as a counter example. An example which goes against the definition. This counter example proves that this relation is not a reflexive relation. Now, is it a symmetric relation? What is symmetric relation? A relation R in set A is called a symmetric relation if the pair A comma B belong to R implies pair B comma A also belong to R for every A and B of the set A. What does it mean? Let's see. Here, let's take an example. 1 comma 3, yes, it does belong to the relation. But can we find a 3 comma 1 in it? No. 3 comma 1 is not there. Yes, write that and show it as a counter example. It goes against the definition. For every pair a comma B, there should be B comma A also in the relation to call it a symmetric relation. Hence, this relation is not a symmetric relation. Now let's see, is it a transitive relation? Transitive relation, a relation R in set A is called a transitive relation if 
pairs a comma b and b comma c if they belong to r that should imply that a comma c should also belong to r for every a b c of the set a here we go checking look 1 comma 3 and 3 comma 5 they follow this pattern a b and b c keeping these two elements same b and b same if we find such pairs in the relation to call it a transitive relation, there should be a comma c pair also available in the relation. So when 1 comma 3 and 3 comma 5 belong to R, check whether we have a 1 comma 5 belonging to this relation. No, 1 comma 5 is not found. 1 comma 5 does not belong to R. Here this example goes against the definition. So we call it a counter example. So we conclude this relation is not a transitive relation. Any relation which is reflexive, symmetric and transitive is called an equivalence relation. What's equivalence relation? A relation R in set A which is reflexive, symmetric and transitive is called an equivalence relation. Of course, this given example is not an equivalence relation. Note one thing. To show these definitions are valid for any example of this kind, this kind of examples shown are not sufficient. These kind of examples are shown only to, only to counter the definitions. That is, to show the definitions are not valid for this definition, for this relation. To show it uh, they are valid, we cannot use simply examples. These are counter examples. The examples that counter the definitions go against the definitions. Here, we take another example. One more relation I'm going to define from set A to set A. This time, the subset is to be made with another rule. Every pair A comma B will be included in the subset in the relation if B is divisible by A. That's what the given condition. Let's see which all ordered pairs can be included in this subset, in this relation. Here we go. Look at the arrow diagram. 1 is divisible by 1. 2 is divisible by 1. 3 is divisible by 1. 4 is divisible by 1. 5 is divisible by 1. Therefore, 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4, 1, 5, all these pairs can be included in the relation. Also, here we go, 2 is divisible by 2, 4 is divisible by 2. So, 2 is related to only 2 and 4, no other element. These elements are also included in the relation. And 3, 3, 4, 4, 5, 5. Only these many more pairs will satisfy this condition. So, this is the roster form of this given relation. Let's see whether this example is reflexive, symmetric, transitive or equivalence relation. For it to be called a reflexive relation, the elements of the kind A comma A should be belonging to this relation. Check. Yes. 1 comma 1, 2 comma 2, 3 comma 3, 4 comma 4, 5 comma 5. All are included in this relation. They are all there in the relation. So, this relation is reflexive relation. But remember, showing these examples will not prove it. We have to write it by using a general element method using this definition given to us. We have to mention that since A is divisible by A is true for all A, all elements of the form A comma A will belong to the R. That is, A is divisible by A. In place of B, B 
place a a is divisible by a is true for any a hence all those kind of all those elements a comma a belong to this relation so we say this relation is reflexive relation secondly let's check whether it is symmetric relation let's check take an example yes 2 comma 4 belong to the relation but we can see we don't find 4 comma 2 in it so we write it by a counter example even 1 comma 3 is there but we can't find 3 comma 1 1 comma 3 was picked up but 3 comma 1 is not included because 1 is divisible by 3 is not a correct statement so this example acts as a counter example and we say this relation is not a symmetric relation now let's see whether it is a transitive relation we will take two elements ab and bc belonging to the relation let ab and bc belong to r for some abc these are arbitrary values not examples like this here a b and b c belong to r means b is divisible by a and c is divisible by b that is b is divisible by a and c is divisible by b means b is equal to m times a c is equal to n times b for some integers m and n from these two equations, let's eliminate B, the middle one. So put the value, put the equation B equal to MA in the second one. So we get C is equal to N into MA. Here, since M and N are integers, MN is also an integer. That means C is equal to an integer into A, which means A comma C belong to R as c is divisible by a c is equal to integer into a so whenever a pair of this kind is taken in the relation we could conclude logically that a pair of a comma c will also belong to r which is what required to call the relation a transitive relation so we can say this relation is transitive relation any relation which satisfy all the three conditions is called an equivalence relation. Here, since the relation failed to be symmetric relation, this is not an equivalence relation. A relation from set of natural numbers to natural numbers is defined. Relation R is equal to set of ordered pairs A comma B such that A and B leave same remainder when divided by 4. Here, 6 is related to 14 because 6 and 14 leave same remainder when divided by 4. Also, 15 and 13 leave same remainder when divided by 4. Both of them leave remainder 3. So 15 comma 3 can also be there in this relation. 1 comma 13 is belonging to the relation because 1 and 13 leave same remainder when divided by 4. Also we can say 14 is related to 14 or 14 comma 14 belong to this relation because 14 and 14 leave same remainder when divided by 4 is a correct statement like that many many pairs we can see now let's see whether this given relation is a reflexive relation to call a relation reflexive relation it has to satisfy this condition Ordered pairs of the form A comma A should belong to R for every A of the given set N. 
Let's see, is it possible? Since A and A leave same remainder when divided by 4 is a correct statement, we can say A comma A element, the pair, will belong to R. All elements of the form A comma A will belong to R. So, the relation is satisfying the definition of reflexivity. So, the relation is reflexive relation. Now, is it a symmetric relation? To call a relation symmetric relation, just to satisfy this condition, if a comma b pair is there in the relation, that should imply that b comma a pair also belong to the relation. Let's take one of them. Let there be a pair a comma b in the relation which implies a and b leave same remainder when divided by 4. That implies b and a leave same remainder divide when divided by 4. Hence the pair b comma a will also be there in the relation. It shows that the relation is a symmetric relation because here we have logically proved that whenever there is a pair A comma B belong to this relation, the pair B comma A will also belong to relation, which is what required to call this relation a symmetric relation. Now, is it a transitive relation? To call it a transitive relation, whenever the pair of the form A comma B and B comma C belong to R, it should imply that A, C pair also belong to R. Let us take two pairs of this kind that belong to the relation. Let A, B and B, C belong to R. Which means A and B leave same remainder when divided by 4 as well as B and C leave same remainder when divided by 4. Both of these statements together imply A and C leave same remainder when divided by 4. That is, the pair A comma C will belong to R. Here again, logically we can conclude that whenever there are two pairs of the form A, B and B, C there in the relation, the pair A, C will also belong to the relation. Hence, it is a transitive relation. Now, a relation which is reflexive, symmetric and transitive is called an equivalence relation. Here obviously, as this example relation is reflexive, symmetric and transitive, we can say it is an equivalence relation. Now something more about it. Go back to the set. We notice that this set gets divided into four subsets E1, E2, E3, E4. These subsets have something special. The total union of this E1, E2, E3, E4 is the set of natural number itself. And any two elements of one subset are related to themselves. Elements of each of these subsets are related only to the elements of the same subset. Which means, say number 5 which belong to E1. 5 cannot be related to 14 because 5 leaves remainder 1 and 14 leaves remainder 2 when divided by 4. So 5 comma 14 will never be included in this relation. Also 5 comma 11 cannot be related. 5 comma 16 cannot belong to this relation. The elements of E1 will be related to the elements of E1 only. Same way, elements of E2 will be related to the elements of E2 only. That is what's special here. Elements of each of the, these subsets are related to only to the elements of the same subset. Such subsets are called equivalence classes. So here, these are the four equivalence classes defined in this set natural number. 